possibly have been the secret life of buildings or the secret life of the T Bay Surf Centre because there's lots of very little uh, odd bits and pieces of the building shown, including um, where's Martin gone? Including one of your toilets. Um, yeah, the design, by the way. And I'm very glad to see there's a holes in it, uh, which means that the uh, standard of cleanliness has been kept up. Just for tonight. Just for tonight. Uh, so I first came across uh, one of Claire's paintings uh, when I came down for a, a cup of coffee in. Um, in Café Martin, best coffee, in, <laughs> best coffee in town. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I was standing at the counter and there was a postcard on the counter which I picked up and idly looked at it and saw that it was a painting done uh, from inside the surf centre looking out at the deck uh, with the, the graffiti in the background. And I was really intrigued at this um, because as maybe a lot of you probably know, I was the person that designed this building um, years and years ago. and. Um, what maybe a lot of people don't know is that the graffiti was done by my son, Edmund, uh, this summer. So that really intrigued me. Uh, so 
After um, a few more uh, visits for the best coffee in Trevor. I met Claire and uh, I was chatting to her about the paintings and I discovered that this wasn't a once-off. There was actually more than one painting. So I looked at her website and I discovered about a third of the paintings that are here now. Um, and um, of course that you know, really got me uh, interested in the whole idea of what was happening here. And I suppose when, when this building was designed, uh, when, we, you know, when Skjok and Roland, Huey and all of us got together to design this building, there was a lot of thought put into the building. And when we finally settled on the shape, I was often imagining what you see when you look out through different parts of the building, through the windows and from the balcony, and you're looking up at the balcony and looking down through the stairs. And you're always trying to visualize what the finished article would be like. And as you can imagine, with the circular building, that's quite a difficult thing to do. But I think as well, when, when a building comes into fruition and you start putting um, people into it and you get the sunlight coming through and you get <coughs> colour and you get movement, the building really takes on a different life of its own. And I think what Claire's paintings have done, is, for me anyway, has captured that kind of, uh, that, es that es essence of, of the building, those sort of, um, those kind of fleeting moments that you don't often see or you're not kind of uh, fully conscious of. And I, I think that, um, you know, that, that's something that comes across very strongly to me, that she sort of captured those moments that those of us that have been coming to this place for 10 years and have kind of maybe not really fully recognized them. Um, they're on the paintings to see, the paint, they're all there in the paintings to see on the wall. Um, <coughs> the other thing is, I suppose, about the paintings for me is that they're not just these fleeting moments, but they're also uh, very interesting, almost abstract compositions, you know, using um, say straight lines from the window bars or maybe the lines of the shadow or some of the curves of the wall or the surfboards stacked against the wall and giving you a diagonal. So you get all these really interesting shapes um, and they become sort of abstract but the other thing about them is that they're not fully abstract because there's always some little thing in the paintings. There's a, you know, a surfboard or there's a bit of a chair or there's a jug or something that brings it back to the reality of what the building is about and the kind of the life that the building has. And uh, I think that's very interesting. Um, Claire says in her notes for the, for the exhibition that she uh, was uh, exploring a path between the figurative and the abstract. And I think this is you know, very much in evidence. Some paintings are much more abstract than others, and some paintings are much more figurative than others. So it's a very interesting kind of mix of those different things. Um, I, I suppose everybody likes, you know, will always have some favorites or some paintings that they like particularly. And, uh, I couldn't say I have any particular favourites, but there are a few that caught my imagination. Um, th there's two paintings inside in, the, in that nice bright room up there uh, on the end wall, and uh, they, they basically show that room with the sunlight coming in and the shadows that the sunlight casts on the floor. And uh, you know, we always think of shadows as being black and dark, but in actual fact, if you look at those paintings, the shadows are they're kind of red and brown on and, and one painting, and they're purple and grey uh, in another painting. And it's kind of like, um, you know, um, I think that at uh, different times of the year you have different qualities of light. You have the evening time, you have the morning time, and you get different kinds of shadows cast. I think that's very interesting that you kind of captured that. Um, the other thing that caught my eye were the, um, the, the rubber plants that uh, I'm sure are not very... <laughs> uh, and there's something very exotic about the rubber plants, you know, in kind of contrast to the, uh, the very abstract kind of straight lines of the building. And what's interesting is when I, when I, was, when I was designing this building, uh, we made a model of it. And uh, when the model was finished, I put a, a model of a big palm tree beside the building. And I was just looking at a photograph of it earlier on. And I, I suppose what, you know, uh, the building was, was a surf center and Hawaii is, the, is the, the birth of surfing and they always associate Hawaii with very exotic foliage. So they kind of can't continue down that idea. Um, the other thing that I really, one of the first things that really caught my attention were, um, you know those chairs, and maybe you can't see anything now, but they're, they're big stools that are always placed at the windows. They're very comfortable stools. I, a few of the paintings have those stools in them. Uh, and they form a kind of a, a square part of, the, part of the composition. But there's also something, I find those chairs, there's, a, there's something about those chairs that absolutely fascinates me. There's, they have a kind of, um, like a kind of a presence, as if there's uh, somebody should be sitting on them, or you know, the, 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 there's always the sea to see behind them. Um, and something I, for me that strikes a chord with me, I don't know, maybe it doesn't strike with everybody, but 
they just they, they mean something to me, those chairs. Um, and then that kind of brings me to the final thing, which um, I think um, uh, Claire has captured in the paintings. And uh, most of you, I suppose, either live in Tremor or certainly will visit Tremor an awful lot. And it's this, this sense of place that, um, that there is in Tremor. Um, and it's often to do, we often think it's to do with the sea. Uh, and the sea is a very powerful presence. And you know, tonight with 50 or 60 surfers out in the water, the sea is very, very much in your face. But I think as well, if you come to um, Tremor, especially in the morning time, when the sun uh, hits the bay and it, it's reflected off the water, and it reflects, it's almost like you have two suns. You know, the, the intensity of light is much greater. And I think there's a lot of the paintings that have captured that kind of, that amount of light, sort of the sea and the sun and the light and the sky. And I think that's um, very commendable that you've actually captured that whole sort of sense of place in the, in, in the uh, paintings. So I think that probably the title of the show was the correct one, Down by the Sea. <laughs> um, so um, finally, I suppose uh, you need to take time to look at the paintings. And uh, I, I suppose in, in that respect, you need to take time to find the paintings because a lot of them are tucked away in little corners of the building. Uh, so you have to explore the building to find the paintings. And then when you see the paintings, the paintings are an exploration of buildings. So it kind of twists itself around very nicely. I kind of like that. Um, so, um, once again, I was just uh, very privileged to be asked to open this exhibition, and, or not to open it, but to speak at the exhibition, and um, also to, um, because of my involvement in the design of the building, uh, I think that the creative uh, ideas that I kind of imagined have been continued on. In fact, I think that, you know, in the Surf Centre here, you're very lucky to have an artist in residence, because it's not clear here or not. Most people have to pay for an artist. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you got plenty of free coffee. <laughs> um, so, you know, ha have a good look at the buildings. Uh, have a look and uh, see which ones you like, which ones are your favourites. Um, they're very reasonably priced. Um, you know, an artist has to live, so uh, have a look at the prices. The prices are very good. Uh, and um, they certainly will be a flavour of what, you know, this part of Tremor is all about. Uh, and just one little last thing is the uh, just there behind that gentleman there, there are some uh, wood blocks or not uh, block prints that uh, Claire is going to uh, develop more of. So it's a cheaper way to uh, get a little bit of uh, the surf centre and more uh, done by the sea brought home to you. So um, finally, thank you very much for all for coming, and uh, I wish Claire every success in her uh, exhibition. Music, jelly babies and wine. <laughs>